Hello, Bobby Torres of Freightbox Recording here to share with you the number one biggest secret to EQing your easy drummer tracks within your heavy production. Now, I just want to say this. I absolutely love Easy Drummer. I use it for pre-production. Uh, I use it for songwriting, and I even use it within my final productions from time to time uh, if I'm working with a band that uses program drums. Now, I get questions a lot, especially on the channel, where people will ask, you know, I'm using Easy Drummer, but it doesn't sound like your mix. It's great and all that you show how to mix live drums, but what do I do if I'm using Easy Drummer. Now, I also want to say this, that everything that I share with you in this video can be applied to any drum software because they all share one thing in common, for the most part. They are all pre-EQ'd and mixed for you already, okay? This is important to understand. If you're sitting down to mix, you know, your Easy Drummer tracks or Superior Drummer tracks or Get Good Drums or whatever, um, a lot of times EQ and compression has been applied to those samples because the whole idea behind these programs, which is awesome, is that they're supposed to sound professional right out of the box. So what I want to do here is I want to share with you a very simple mix that I have where I'm using all stock sounds from my Easy Drummer plugin. And I'm going to dive deep and just share with you a few examples of how I go about EQing these tracks to sound realistic within a production. And I'll also share some mistakes that people generally make when it comes to EQing their Easy Drummer or program tracks in general. Let's check it out. Okay, in my opinion, that's a pretty solid sounding drum performance, and it's all done with Easy Drummer and all of the stock sounds within Easy Drummer. And I'm using the exact same Metal Machines pack that I've been using for the past decade. I absolutely love it, and I rarely use anything else. Now, if you look here, I have a bunch of drum tracks, and they're all coming from Easy Drummer. They were all pre routed from an Easy Drummer plugin, and they have been printed to audio because when I mix drums, I don't want to be messing around with MIDI. I want to have my MIDI consolidated so I can approach my MIDI drum mix just as if I were mixing live drums with one key. Let me repeat this one key difference. Keeping in mind that easy drummer tracks already sound good. That's the most important thing. What happens is this. Let me give you an example here. Let's take a listen to our raw kick drum sound in this mix. Let's check it out. That is the raw kick drum coming from Easy Drummer. As you can hear, it's already super duper bright, has a lot of aggression to it, and it's already sounding pretty crisp and clear. Now, if you've ever mixed live drums, for the most part, generally you're gonna have to pull out some lower mids to make the kick drum sound less cardboard box-like. You're gonna have to boost some top end. Sometimes you're gonna have to boost some bottom end, but that's clearly not the case here. And because of this, the only EQ I have on my kick drum from these Easy Drummer tracks is just a little bit of a high frequency removal. So I'm actually doing the opposite of what I would be doing when mixing live drums. So just to drive this point home, it's important to listen to the source tracks and ask yourself what they need. They might not need anything at all. In this case, when I asked myself what this kick drum needed, it actually needed less high frequency. And there's no reason to pull out lower mids since the kick drum is so nice and clear at the source because clearly it was pre-mixed, pre-EQ'd, pre-compressed, and all that good stuff. Let's look at my snare drum here. I'm actually gonna bypass my plugin on the snare drum. Actually, let's take a listen to it. So raw, that's a good sounding snare drum. And because of that, all I'm doing here is high passing my snare drum at around 88 hertz and just pulling out again some top end because for me, it was actually too bright sounding. The complete opposite uh, of what I would find when mixing live drums. If I were mixing live drums, again, with snare drum, just like with kick drum, generally it's gonna sound a little boxy. You're gonna have to pull out some lower mids, boost some top end, uh, maybe be a little more aggressive with the roll off on the low end, so on and so forth. So when I sat down to mix these tracks, again, I asked myself, what does this snare drum need? And all I needed was a little bit of top end removal, and I'm just cleaning up some of the low end just as a precautionary measure. And the big one, and I say this is a big one because a lot of people don't even export their Easy Drummer tracks. They actually try to mix their Easy Drummer all on the plugin itself, which is just a stereo 
output. So right here, I have my drum bus and the only things that I have going on, and by the way, only my shells are being sent to this drum bus, kick, snare, and toms. Very, very minimal, very minimal EQ rolling off all frequencies below 40 hertz, all frequencies above 12K, just to get rid of any super duper high frequency stuff that I don't need, even though these tracks had very little of that. Reducing the overall level of all frequencies below 500 hertz with a low shell filter, only by a dB and a half, and a little bit of a cut, only a dB, at one and a half K. That is all of the EQ on my Easy Drummer tracks. It did not require anything outside of this. And that is the secret to EQing Easy Drummer or program drum tracks in general. It's to not overdo it and do not pretend like you're mixing live drums because you are not. You're mixing something that is already pre-mixed and pre processed. I get this question over and over and over again. And to be honest with you, that truly is the secret to making your MIDI drums sound realistic and not weird and spiky and overly EQ'd and overly bright. Because most of the time when people send me their mixes to check out and they're utilizing programmed drums, the programmed drums sound overly bright, overly sterile, and just strange sounding. And it's usually because people just over EQ their programmed drums that again are already processed in the first place. So let's quickly again listen to the drum performance and the drum mix and uh, see what we got. Again, all I'm using is Easy Drummer, just with a minimal, minimal amount of processing on the individual tracks, and I have a mix here that I'd be completely happy sending to one of my clients. So let me know, do you use Easy Drummer? If not Easy Drummer, what program drum software do you use? Do you find yourself overcomplicating the process and maybe adding too much EQ? Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know your opinion. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. Now, if you're looking to improve the sound of your mixes, the truth is that so much of your final result comes down to how well you understand basic, fundamental EQ and compression. And because of this, I'm offering you direct access right now for absolutely free to my crisp and clear heavy mix formula. The heavy mix formula is comprised of three main components, an EQ and compression cheat sheet that features all of my starting points for the main instruments within a heavy production. The PDF guide contains clickable links to private mixing tutorials. And below each of the individual tutorials, there's a link to a multi-track download where you can download the exact same multi-tracks that I'm using in the tutorial so that you can mix along with me. Again, right now, the crisp and clear heavy mix formula is absolutely free and you can have direct instant access right now by clicking the link below. Until next time, happy mixing.